Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to solve with you the problem of the pendulum, whereby the ball was not swinging back and forth, but going around in a circle. Very straightforward problem, certainly within reach of any high school student who has had a little bit of physics. So here is that pendulum, length L, at the end is a mass, M, which we will assume is, can be considered to be a point. L is 50 centimeters. The mass was 300 grams. And my question was now if this angle alpha is 35 degrees, so this angle is also 35 degrees, so this top angle is 70 degrees. How long does it take then for the mass to go around once? And we call that the period, for obvious reasons. It's the period, how much time it takes for one revolution. I changed the T here, which originally I meant to be periods, which is very common that we call the periods capital T. But since I want to use the capital T for the tension in the strings, I will change that to P. So I'm asking you what is P, which is the period of an oscillation with three digit precision. The mass of the string I have measured is only two grams, so completely ignore it. Now, this is the tension in the string at this moment in time, T. I decompose it in a vertical direction and in a horizontal direction. The vertical direction is T cosine alpha, and that must be equal to mg because there is no acceleration in the vertical direction. So we already know that T cosine alpha is mg. The horizontal component, T sine alpha, that is the one that keeps it in orbit. So that is the centripetal force acting on M. And the centripetal force acting on this mass is M omega squared R. And omega is the angular resolution in radians per second. R is this radius here. And the sine of alpha, this is alpha, is r divided by l. And omega is 2 pi divided by p. p is then the period in seconds. And I have used g is 9.8. If you use 9.81, you will find the same value to a very high degree of accuracy. You can try that. Okay, so this T is mg divided by cosine alpha. So mg divided by cosine alpha, I put here for this T. And sine alpha is r divided by L, I put that for this sine alpha. So you see mg divided by cosine alpha, that is that t, times r divided by l, the sine of alpha, is m omega square r. You solve this, trivial, and you find that the period is 2 pi times the square root of l cosine alpha divided by g. We had to make no small angle approximation. It holds for all angles alpha, all the way from zero to 90 degrees. There is nowhere here that we have to make any approximation. Suppose alpha is zero degrees and the cosine of alpha is one. 
then you find what you could have predicted. Namely, that the period is then the period of a pendulum which swings in this direction, which has a very small angle. Well, alpha zero is very, very small. You can't go any smaller. So it shouldn't surprise you that when you make this alpha zero, that you get the classical answer that we always had for a pendulum that swings in a plane with a very small angle. 2 pi divided by this square root of L over G. If we assume for now that my length was quite accurate, it wasn't so easy for me to give the precise value of the length, I told you that, because the object, my bob, has a small finite size of a few centimeters. So, so I had to use my experience of 43, 43 years being an experimental physicist. So I'm, I mentioned that it would be 50 centimeters and that is probably close. If I substitute in here, L is 0.5 and G is 9.8, then the period for one oscillation, that means if you want a swinging oscillation, small angle, or you can rotate it around. Even if your angle of alpha were three degrees, then the square root of the cosine of three degrees is 0.999. So this is then the answer that you would find. Either you swing it back and forth at a small angle or you rotate it around in this way with a small angle so that cosine alpha is maybe only 0.999. And I'll bring that to a test. We'll do that very shortly. So for alpha 35 degrees, this is the period. 1.285 seconds. When the angle increases, the period goes down. Notice already at zero degrees it is large, larger than at 35 degrees. 35 degrees is larger than at 60 degrees. When you go to 90 degrees, then the cosine of that angle is zero. So the period will be zero seconds. Well, that would violate perhaps this Einstein's theory of special relativity. But to show you that indeed the closer alpha will be to 90 degrees, the smaller the period will be, I chose for alpha 89.999 degrees. And you'll find a period then of 6 milliseconds. I did a demonstration when I posted the problem. And I measured, or you measured, at my advice, 10 oscillations whereby I eyeball the angle alpha to be, as much as I could judge, 30, 35 degrees, maybe a little larger, maybe a little smaller. I watched the video, and so I could also do the timing with my stopwatch. 10 oscillations. And I measured it twice. And I found the same value within one tenth of a second out of the 10 oscillations. And so the mean value that I found for the period in my first demo was 1.245 seconds. If you compare this with this, I was only 3% off. This is only 3% different from this. I did the second demonstration, and when I measured it myself with my stopwatch, in both cases did I measure 12.2 seconds. So the average was 1.22 for one oscillation, and so I'm off there by 5%. So I didn't do so badly, if I may say that. So if I now make the rather simplistic uh, assumption that I calculate out of this 
a mean value of alpha, using now these numbers as the period, then my mean value for alpha was closer to 41 degrees than it was to 35 degrees. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, now I want to bring to a test the idea that if I swing the pendulum, same pendulum that we had before, I will change the Okay, so you can see more now. So here is this pendulum. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. So I could I could move it like this back and forth. If you want to, I can rotate it around a little bit like this with a small angle. Either way should give us if indeed my L was 50 centimeters, a value very close to 1.42 seconds. And so we'll do 10 oscillations. And then you tell me, or I will tell myself, after I record this video, of course, I will also measure it with my stopwatch. And see how close indeed I can come, I will come, I hope, to the 1.4 two seconds. Now it will not be on the butt, <laughs> exactly of course, but shouldn't be too far off. So if you're ready, when I say now, that's when I will start. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Oh, I have to do ten. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I have to do it all over, I have to do it all over, I have to do it all over. With my apologies. Okay. So when I say now, then we will start. Now. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll do it once more. That allows you also to test your own accuracy with which you start and stop your stopwatch. My time of uncertainty, if I include both the start and the stop used to be a tenth of a second when I was 50 years old. <laughs> now it may be a little larger, it may be closer to two tenths of a second. Although when I measured this one twice, I measured in both cases 12.2 seconds. So maybe I'm not that old <laughs> anymore. So we'll do it once more, okay? So I will say now when I start. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I hope I have converted all of you into experimental physicists. And what is more remarkable for me, that this motion can be solved for any angle alpha. This holds for any angle of alpha. By the way, if my measurements are a bit different from this value, that means probably that my length is not exactly 50 centimeters, but that's up to you to decide. So the remarkable thing is that the period can be calculated for any angle. 
And that's sort of non-intuitive because on the swinging one back and forth, the period is 2 pi times the square root of L over Z only for small angles. And how small? That depends on you. That depends on how accurate you want to be. If you put in an angle of 5 degrees, you will still get a quite accurate value. And I did that in several of my 801 lectures, where I made the angle 5 degrees and where I made the angle even 10 degrees. And in both cases, the period was almost identical. Now, if you go to 30 or 40 degrees, that's certainly not true with the swinging penny. Here, any angle. Isn't that funny? Isn't that great? Okay, we'll be friends. Have a nice day. And take care. Oh, there's one thing that I forgot to mention, but it hasn't escaped your attention, of course. Namely, that the mass of the bob doesn't enter into the answer at all. And you remember that that's also true for the pendulums that we dealt with, which were swinging like this. As long as the mass of the bob is small compared to the length, and as long as the mass of the string can be ignored relative to the mass of the ball. And you see here that this M cancels this M. That was predictable. So when I told you that the mass was 300 grams, uh, in a way I was trying to see whether some of you might use that number. Okay? Don't be angry at me. I sometimes give information that is more than is needed. All right then. <laughs>